On today's show, we've got the usual, we got the news, we got the notes, we have the Thursday night preview, but we also have a mid-season mock draft. Let's take a look at those rest-of-season rankings. How are we feeling about guys, guys, that were uh, afterthoughts in the draft and they have moved up into the top 24 picks? Who's there? Subscribe to this channel and don't miss a moment. Hey, Foot Clan, not all work collaboration tools are created equal. Some only allow you to organize information. Others only allow for project management. Notion is the one tool for your whole team because you can collaborate on notes, documents, projects, wikis, keep your team on track, and uh, you don't want to be paying for all of these single-use tools because that can get costly. You want you want to do it all. I Mike. like a bundle. Yeah, I like a, I like something to do everything. Yes. And they are an all-in-one collaboration software, and it combines all of those things. Note-taking, document sharing, wikis, project management. So much more, one simple, easy-to-use tool, and they are currently running a special offer for listeners of the show. You can go to Notion.so notion.so and use promo code footballers to get $250 off its annual team plan. That's multiple months for free for your growing team. So don't forget that's notion.so notion.so enter the promo code footballers during checkout, get collaborating with $250 off notion.so and use the promo code footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Wednesday, October 13th. Welcome into the show. It's good to be back. It's good to be back. Oh, it's good, it's good to be back. Appreciate you fellas holding it down for a couple days. Oh, it was locked down. I did listen to the show. Oh, don't do that. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I I mean, at the very end of, of yesterday's spectacular waiver episode, um, you were very humble about how good the show was. Well, so, was, was it as good as we thought? It's a great question. Mike. I think you had compared it to the Monday Night Football game, which oh, was, was one of the best games of all time. Right. Awesome game, yeah. yeah. So, and then you you just kind of you lean the show side, uh huh, mm -hmm. just barely. Yeah, which I mean, yeah. in my interest to agree, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> so, we, I too am very humble. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a great show for you today. This is this is a really fun one. We're going to be. We'll be into the buy or sell, some news we got to catch you up on, but then we're going to do a fantasy draft redo. I mean, we're five weeks in. I guess we're four weeks in heading into – no, we're five weeks in. Yeah. Heading into week six, and we're going to kind of uh, do it all over again. Yeah, this is actually pretty valuable to take a kind of uh, inventory of – what mistakes were made, and, and going forward, it's almost trade value. It's it's looking, it's, it's like kind of rest, rest of season, season yeah. rankings mm -hmm. where you're saying, okay, if we were to start today knowing what we know about these teams, about these matchups, the, the schemes, the health, all of those things, who would actually go first? And, and I, you have to assume that um, the accuracy level five weeks in is going to be much higher than the draft season where everything is a mystery. If only we could draft... With five weeks worth of data, we got to figure that out. Make a league year. that redrafts every quarter. Oh, uh, that sounds frightening. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll be doing uh, twenty-four picks. We're going two rounds. Yeah. Yep. Sounds good. You guys doing well this morning? Working on it. Yeah. Pretty Working phenomenal. We well, got some coffee in the. In the <clears throat> no, no, I've I've already had the coffee. Just was one of those one of those long nights with the kids. Oh, really? Yeah. You know these rap scallions. I thought they were all grown up. No. No, and it, like, I don't know what a, a child's favorite thing to do is to like you know wake you up in the middle of the night. It's their it's it's top three for them. Uh, we had Disneyland a, and then waking up parents in the middle of the night. We had a bad dream alert last night. Oh yeah, man, that was not, not a good time. Uh, I'm I'm staring oh. at your mug, and not, nothing has gotten more fanfare on the YouTube. That's true. Than Mike's Nike shoe mug, where if Here, he drinks me. from that mug, there's five comments wanting to source it. Which, not a sponsor. Not not a sponsor, but whatever. We'll give him the shout out. Sneakermugs.com. Oh, okay. That's nice. You only got one of them? Yeah, I've only got one. Yes. Right. Uh but I will be 
expecting a check. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, a reminder. We are uh, we're live on Green Room this afternoon, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Our live show. It, so. and it's, it's so much fun. I've had a good time. It's it's it there it's got its own unique, you know, tempo, flavor. flavor. It's just a little bit different and people get to come on the stage and Well, Brooks, you ask can jump in and say that. I mean, Brooks has an opinion on it. It's a party. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a party that Brooks attends. That's for sure. And yeah. any party Brooks attends, yeah. you want to be at. That's the only party I attend. Wow. <laughs> Twitter at the FF Ballers, the community with uh, the extra weekly show, premium perks, all that good stuff. Jointhefoot.com. Let's do some buy sell. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Well, last week we had one of them thrown out. Calvin Ridley ended up not being there. So, uh, throwing it out. I mean, I took the under 100 receiving yards and I was right. Yeah, I get. Uh, congrats. The, the sports book would cancel your bet, Jason. That's true. That's true. Damian Harris, top twenty running back. Jason sold it. We both bought it. Look, look, look. This was process over results for last week. Let's not worry about what happened. The process was very correct. <laughs> His season's over. Damian for relevance. Uh, it it could be. I mean, if you can't perform on a Houston matchup, well, he he was like. He, he, if he holds the ball just a little tighter going. I, but that, that's part of it. Oh, I, I totally agree. But was, like he was on his way to having a monster week, had the fumble, and then also the uh, the injury. I feel like you are threading the finest needle with Damian Harris on a week. Certainly. On a certain week. Um, I mean, me and you bought it, and we, we lost. Yeah, yeah and then process. Terry McLaurin. Uh, we both, uh, Jason and I, sold the top 15 performance against New Orleans. He was the wide receiver 51. Look, I thought I was just buying, would his finish have the numbers one and five? In? Right, which... Did, that's on you guys for trying to confuse me. Dyslexia. Mike, Mike from what my, my record keeping, Mike has been 100% accurate yeah. on all of these picks. I'm glad we agree. Uh, buy or sell for week six. Uh, let's start here. A.J. Brown, is he a top 24 wide receiver against Buffalo? He hasn't done it yet this year. Comes back in week five. I thought this would be a smash play coming off the injury. No other options. He ends up the wide receiver 63, played 64% of snaps, has not delivered. I'm not going to predict a delivery here against Buffalo. I'm going to sell it. Shipment delayed again? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to wait for it to show up before I try to open the package. This is a really, really tough one because <laughs> – um, A.J. Brown, I think on most weeks you would view as a definite top 24 wide receiver. They don't always uh, finish uh, consistently in the top 24, but he's got that talent. Now he's an extra week removed from the hamstring injury. He's necessary. This is a primetime game, but Buffalo's just been so good. I mean, their defense has, has been locking it down. That being said... Uh, they, Number they, one against fantasy wide receivers. Yeah, I, 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 I know that, and I still am taking A.J. Brown. If he was um, on my roster, I would be starting him uh, with the expectation that he is a top 24 guy. So I, I, I will buy that he can find the end zone in this game against Buffalo. Not an argument against it, just a outlay of five weeks, 40% catch percentage on the year for A.J. Brown. Mike, what are you doing? I will point out that last year, this year has been worse for A.J. Brown uh, because he's been on the field and not producing. But last year, you had the week one just stinker of a game. Then he was hurt, and he returned I remember. against Buffalo. Buffalo. So we at least have that going for us, which that's a real fun narrative to have. Buffalo against the, the Titans secondary. I think they're going to score a whole bunch of points which A.J. Brown just becomes even more necessary, so I will buy the top 24. All right, Chase Edmonds, a top 24 running back against Cleveland. Cardinals 5-0, and traveled to Cleveland this week. He was a running back 25 or better in weeks 1 through 4 before the RB56 finish in week 5. He only had 10 opportunities, it seems like, well, the Cardinals offense kind of stalled out in this one. They, yes. It was a dirty defensive win. Um. But you could probably attribute it a little bit to the injury concerns heading into the weekend. 
for his workload being limited. James Conner is more than capable of of siphoning work to prevent injury for Edmonds. So what you're looking for here is really pass catching work and more opportunities against Cleveland. I'm not that confident in it, so I will sell it. Yeah, I'm I'm with you on that one. I I don't know how um, lingering this hamstring issue is as far as them maybe managing his workload, not necessarily uh, it actively stopping him from being able to perform. But Cleveland is top six against running backs as far as fantasy points given up. This is uh, on the road in Cleveland. I, I'm not going to bank on, on Chase in this matchup. If you wanted a counterpoint and we both sold, it would be the fact that Max Williams – has obviously been sure. injured, and the target share for Chase Edmonds thus far has been 17%. That's how it will have to get done Yeah, this it has week. to be pass catching. But I'm going to sell this as well. Cleveland has been sensational, at least in terms of giving up fantasy points to the running back. Now, and you're like, well, Austin Eckler. Eckler was, Eckler was not having a monster game, and then at the end, it really turned around for him, including – a play where the Cleveland Browns, in fact, picked him up and said, you will score a touchdown on us. So th that went against them. I'm going to sell this Chase Edmonds. Thank you, letters to the Browns. Defense on that one from yes. fantasy managers. I mean, it was the only play, but it's, it's, still, funny it's when, still surprising that you can convince your defense, that, guys, we have to let them score. We have to. I like what they did. Yeah. Uh, Adam Thielen. Buy or sell a top 24 oh, performance against Thielen. Carolina. Weeks one through three, 26 targets, 21 catches, four touchdowns. Weeks four and five, 11 total targets, five receptions, no touchdowns. That means he was outside the top 60 for the last two weeks. Clearly scoring touchdowns will benefit Adam Thielen's fantasy what numbers. Uh, top 24, I'll sell it. Carolina's pretty solid defense. I'm going to... I don't know. The opposite of staying in the flames, stay in the ice bath. I don't know what you want to say. I'll let you hop in first, Mike. So what's troubling, not just about the, the recent performance here of Adam Thielen, is the performance as a whole for the Minnesota Vikings. Their offense has just – perhaps it's the, it's the absence of Dalvin Cook. Uh, as I mean, Dalvin Cook does seem like the engine that makes the Vikings go, but – in the two games that Dalvin has been out, Madison has been great in, in those performances. They're still not putting up a lot of points. So for a top 24, and the Panthers have been solid against fantasy wide receivers, I'm going to sell. I wanted you to go first so that hopefully you would. What I would buy it? That you would buy, but I'm, I'm selling this line. I think the only way he's top 24 is if he gets a touchdown, which can happen, except the Carolina Panthers defense is – is legit and the Carolina Panthers are probably there they are my 2021 non-cardinal favorite team uh to root for right now I uh, I believe in uh that murderous coach <laughs> jaw rule so um I will sell this line <sighs> as well yeah I'm I, you know Darnold struggled recently yeah, uh he did. and so I am, I'm kind of curious what the rest of the season is going to look like for them um but uh it's, can we get Dalvin Cook back See that I was going to ask that question too. That'd like, be nice. Like there is, there's the stat line for Madison, but then there's the intangible, unseen. Hey, the play action pass is not played the same. Maybe if Dalvin's not in the backfield, or the screen game for Dalvin isn't there. I mean, I Madison certainly performs statistically, but the offense hasn't performed. So it's always interesting when stuff like that happens. All right, that was Buy or Sell, brought to you by our friends at Pristine Auction. Don't forget to use the code BALLERS, Ballers. at pristineauction.com. You'll get a $10 credit towards some sweet sports gear. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Let's go ahead and focus here at the top of the news on Jason's backfield in mm -hmm. League of Record. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll call this the IR squad. Mm. Clyde Edwards-Alaire. David Montgomery both placed on. Oh, I got both of those guys. Injured reserve. Yeah. Uh, uh, thankfully, David Montgomery's they was could on. Share a cab. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, and guess who's driving? Christian McCaffrey, my other running back. Um, uh, David Montgomery was placed on the IR on Saturday, so one of his three uh, n missed games that you know you have to miss Required at least three games missed, yeah. um, is already over. So two more guaranteed misses for David Montgomery, at least three for Clyde. All right, uh, we have Tua activated from the 21, uh, or I guess 
Was he activated or is he in the window? He's he's uh, in the window, the 21-day window. Okay. So he's off of the IR. So they are in the process of bringing him back. And then uh, Rob Gronkowski, it's been reported he'll be out for Thursday night's game. Do we still technically have nothing from the official team? That report? is That would be correct. So thanks. So this was reported from uh, insider Jordan Schultz. And, you know, it's it's out there. It's being widely reported. Except for in your fantasy platforms where Gronk is not able to go on the IR yet. And because waivers the, run in 10 minutes. Because the de- <laughs> and, <laughs> Thanks for that. And you may be living that life. Cardinals. Uh, it's just, you know he's going to be out. Yeah. Just mark him out. Yeah. I do think that. I mean, that, that should have been the case for David Montgomery last week. Yes. Even though the team didn't report it, we all know. Mm-hmm. Well, it was even worse. This one is, like, much closer because it was, like, Gronk may play. That was out there. And maybe that's still in, in the hope for Bruce Arians. David Montgomery was, he's going to be out multiple weeks. And then we get to waiver day and they're like, hmm, well, doubtful. <laughs> I mean, the truth is, is even if he was made active, you'd have to drop somebody to activate him off your IR. So it would work out. Cardinals signed uh, Richard Rodgers to the practice squad looking for a tight end. They may do more than that, but Mm -hmm. Anthony Miller was signed to the Steelers practice squad, Uh, originally Jacksonville, but then the Steelers were like, we want you to, and he said, yeah, I'd choose you. (laughs) Um, Blake Bortles uh, worked out for the Seahawks. Blake the Snake. Uh, You got that drop for us? Do we still got the Blake the Snake? I got a snake, man. It's never going to die. Can we have him sign with the Bears instead? For just for Allen Robinson's sake. Oh, oh, I oh, see. Oh, you what want to you're reunite saying. that? Yes. Yeah. 1414? Yes. Yeah. I could see that happening. You bring him in there. All right. I was confused. What is the latest actual report on Justin Fields? Is he okay? He is okay. Yeah. The latest report is he is expected to play. Obviously, he missed a couple of snaps and there could have been a situation where a bone bruise happens and after the game um it gets worse for him next week, but he is good to go. All right. That was today's news and notes brought to you by our friends at Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. If you want to know what's happening, you need to download the Sleeper app. It's free and then join the breaking alerts channel uh, because it's faster than everyone else. And we are constantly having some of our hooligans here at the fancy footballers headquarters. They basically get that alert, and then they go report it in our Yeah, they're slap. like, whoa, do you see this news that I just found? Yeah. Yes, we all have the Sleeper <laughs> app. <laughs> Trying to break news from Sleeper. Um, all right, you guys want to uh, get into the draft Let's redo? Let's go. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. While we're doing a 2021 redo, we set it at the top, a couple of rounds. This will be fun because, uh, you know, over the course of doing this, we'll, we'll go round robin here, but we'll also share the top 10 at every position through five weeks, which will be kind of fun to do. So, Mike, you have the first pick, and, um, well, go ahead. Well, it, it, honestly, if this were come, coming off of week three, the decision may be different, but since he is expected back, I will. I would still take Christian McCaffrey number one overall. The running back one, the running back three, uh, in weeks one and two, was on his way to another spectacular performance against Houston before the unfortunate injury. He's just he's just such a beast and involved. He is the offense, so I'm taking McCaffrey. Okay, well, um, did I, I surprise you? Well. Yeah, you did actually. Okay. But uh being at number 2 is all right. I made my rest of season rankings in preparation for this and I had that debate as it, that internal would Christian McCaffrey still be the most valuable player give, given the fact that he was injured again and he was. Yeah, and it makes sense but you are like the discussions around him and Dalvin Cook have the same like center point of conversation which is you are running a risk of re-injury. Both players have now had re-injury. Mm-hmm. And then there's a player out there that I will take at number two that has 142 attempts in five weeks. That means this player is averaging 28 rushing attempts. I don't know if you are aware of this. Per game. But that total touches for the beginning first five weeks of the season is more 
touches in the first five weeks of a season than any other player in NFL history. That would be Derrick Henry, mm-hmm. yeah, who has 142 carries, and I believe the next highest carry count is in the 90s. So I will go with Derrick Henry. Uh, so you, also, would, you would have taken Henry over McCaffrey? It would, I think so. Okay. I think I would do I, it. I, I don't think it's there's really, it's really hairs. close. Yeah, I mean McCaffrey's ceiling is higher, but the injury risk is much higher. Derrick Henry, I mean the way you describe McCaffrey as the offense, like we say the Tennessee Derrick Henrys all the time, and and what I like too, and I guess McCaffrey has it, but both players have a very very clear backup that you can insure these players with. I mean Chuba Hubbard right now, people are doing that. Hubbard had a great week, over 100 yep. yards this past week. And then Jeremy McNichols, go watch the games. Like, he has juice. When he gets the ball out of the backfield, like, it's it's Henry and then it's McNichols. So, if you have Henry, you can 100% be insured by that big manly body yeah. that it's not going to break down. But if it does, you can you don't have to worry about a roulette situation. Yeah, the injury risk, obviously, when you get the workload Henry's getting and you say, oh, he's only human, and that's just the, where I would Disagree. <laughs> Disagree. I would say, I don't think you can injure a mountain. You know, you don't look at a mountain and be like, Dad, he's going to get hurt when I climb it. No, it's not. It's fine. Um, I, w- I would have Derrick Henry number two as well. The, number th- it, sorry, Jay, just to keep the Derrick Henry question going, or discussion, next year is going to be fascinating. Because I, I agree, Henry, it's either one or two, and he would be – he's on pace to shatter Larry Johnson's – rushing record which was 416 attempts 416 attempts and Larry Johnson was never the same after that year so this is going to be a fascinating uh discussion in the off season of do you buy in again the problem is is everything you're saying is true going into this year yeah so last it's like year. The, I mean all the doubts around him is all, all the math nothing statistically makes sense for the mountain yet the mountain still stands I mean it's just you're right. I mean, the same discussion will happen, only compounded by this season's workload. But right now, it's like... I mean, the, well, last year was 378 carries. He's currently pacing for 470 well, I, plus. That's a very large difference. Yeah, an extra game. Yeah. That's not 100 carries? <laughs> right, game. Yeah, 100 carries game. Um, yeah, so that he would be my second pick. Uh, the next pick to me is easy. Uh, I, I expect, just like Christian McCaffrey will be back this week, I expect Alvin Cook will be back this week as well. He is valuable enough to me uh, okay. to take him at number three. That's interesting. This is where it gets interesting to me because after those top three guys, you have Ezekiel Elliott, who's been great. You have Alvin Kamara, who's always dominant. You have some of these wide receivers, your Devonta Adams, Tyreek Hill, that have definitely moved up, like redrafting um, you know, in in the draft season this year, it was you'd be at the ninth, tenth, sometimes the twelfth pick before you saw a wide receiver go off the board. We were so running back hungry. Um, I, you know, if we're redoing this here, those guys are going way higher on my list. That being said, I will. You go, left Austin Eckler off of that. Yeah, I'm sure, a, I'm offended by that. Sure, Wait, no, he's I'm absolutely up, in the in the in the. Discussion. Are you trying to pick for me? Wait, we're, this isn't snake. <laughs> No, it's not a snake. Oh, ridiculous. What do you mean, a snake every three picks? Yeah. I that, that's a new snake, man. <laughs> what do you, it's, I mean, it's the same way we do I all of our... snakes. Oh, man. thank you. Uh, all of our spitballers drafts, we go, you know, three picks and then snake back. But yeah, that's I, fine. I guess we kind of are pretending it's two rounds as okay. opposed to like three-person yeah. rounds. Well, I know who I was going to pick, so we'll <laughs> stay tuned to see who Mike picked. And I will tell you who I'm going to pick, but first I want to thank today's sponsor, Bird Dogs. Bird Dog shorts, they have, look, they have built in underwear and they're the most comfortable shorts ever. And like this company. And we're positive you can't, you can't use them. You can't go to the bathroom in them. They're just underwear. Correct. Okay. Well, yeah, you don't want to go to the bathroom in your shorts, just, especially I, if you're wearing the bird dogs. Uh, I have some bird dogs. They're fantastic. Look, these are, you can really use them for anything. I like using them as workout shorts. You can get uh, the, the length of the short. Look. I, I've Mike likes working. to show off the thighs. I've been working out. I'm no AJ Dillon yet. Yet. Soon. It just like three to five more decades, and I could maybe get up to the, the quad size of him. But my bird dog, I'm showing him off. Because what if you just work out one out, quad? Sky's, no, 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 no. Skies out, thighs out. 
And they're perfect for doing literally anything, beach, brunch, golf, pool, working out. And not a lot of companies will say this, but they're, they're willing to say it. They took Lululemon's designer and they're just doing it better. <laughs> so <laughs> in your face, I guess. Go to birddogs.com and enter the promo code FANTASY and you'll get some bird dog shorts and they'll throw in a free bird dogs whistle tip football. You remember those Nerf Vortex howler footballs that whistle when you throw them? The footballs that you can literally throw a mile. Yeah, that one, a must have for football season. That's birddogs.com, promo code fantasy, and boom, a free bird dogs whistle tip football with your pair of bird dogs. You will not take these things off, I promise you. And we want to thank Simply Safe, our favorite home security company, and they've got big news. They are launching their new wireless outdoor security camera. That's right. The uh, system that U.S. News and World Report names the best home security system of 2021 just got better. The brand new outdoor security camera, it's engineered with all the advanced tech and the security features that you want, that you expect. But there is even more. There's an ultra-wide 140-degree field of view, so you can watch over your entire yard. It's 1080p HD resolution with an 8 times zoom. You want to check faces? No problem. Oh, you want to capture that license plate? No problem. Capture that critical evidence. <laughs> Captured. It's got a built-in spotlight, color night vision, so day or night. And my favorite part, it's got easy-to-remove rechargeable batteries, so you don't need an outlet. You don't have to drill you know, a hole all that the way through nice. your house. It's super nice. Uh, it, it integrates with your Simply Safe home security system, which we all have. To learn more about the exciting new Simply Safe wireless outdoor security camera, visit simplysafe.com slash footballers. What's more, Simply Safe is celebrating this new camera by offering 20% off your entire new system and your first month of monitoring service for free when you enroll in interactive monitoring. Again, it's simplysafe.com slash footballers. All right, just just I know we're competitive, but just for clarity's sake, we're not even competing here. <laughs> We're just redrafting. I want to make the better picks than you. Okay. Well, Mike, you are up, and I'm curious because it's two people that I'm looking at here. Oh, that's who you would take at number four here? Yeah. I mean, I guess I'm happy with whoever you leave me. I'm not taking a running back. Okay. I'm not taking a wide receiver. Really? I would take Travis Kelsey here. At I think four. I think he is. I mean, in the draft season, to me, Travis Kelsey was – I had no problem if you wanted to take him 105, 106 – to me, he has moved up in value. I, I know he had the one down game in week four, but he's just he is a consistent force at a position that is hard to find that, and he has upside each and every single week. Week winning upside at a position that doesn't carry that, and I'll, I'll find some value at the running back and wide receiver later. I, Travis Kelsey, to me, is, is a foundational player. He, okay. I like how you say he only had one down week two weeks ago when he was the the tight end 25. Last week, he was only the tight end six, Mike. I mean, that is so low for Travis Kelsey. Sure. Almost embarrassing. Well, to me, this pick, I would have stayed at running back, and Eckler and Elliott are the two that I'm looking at. There's lightning, I guess kind of literally, in a bottle in Los Angeles right now with Staley and, and what they've captured on offense. Like, they... They're going to be a top five offense this year, each and every week. And Eckler represents such a big part of that. Like, there's an argument to be made that he should be viewed more similar to Christian McCaffrey than I think people are even. I thought the uh, for for Jason's pick, I would not have cared if 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 he uh, if he wanted a running back and you wanted to go Austin Eckler over Dalvin Cook. I don't think that's egregious. But there is there's more there's injury risk there with Eckler, mm -hmm. and uh, so I'm going to go Ezekiel Elliott. I think you have a similar argument, right? The offense is outstanding. They're in a division that's very vulnerable. We, we've seen that Washington's defense doesn't really exist, and Zeke is, has proven himself so far this year. The team is willing. He looks fantastic. The team's willing to turn the ball over to the running game if they need to, and uh, so I will go Ezekiel Elliott at the fifth pick, um, staying running back. Yeah, I if I would have gone Zeke um, uh, over Kelsey. I would have gone Zeke over uh, Eckler, and I would have gone Zeke over Kamara personally. For for me going forward, uh, it's a shame that you know if we were going into week six, this guy is on bye week, but nobody has theirs passed, so you've got to suck it up at some point. I would still personally take Alvin Kamara ahead of. Austin Eckler, and that's not a slight on Eckler. It's more remembering how good 
uh, Alvin Kamara is. I realized that he had no targets two weeks ago, had a down game, and there's a lot of question marks around the Saints team, around the Saints offense, but getting Michael Thomas back, which is about to happen, I think is going to be great, uh, great for Kamara. It's not like Kamara has been out here um, on an otherworldly target pace while Thomas is out, and once Thomas comes in, he's not going to have that. It's just been this offense needs a wide receiver one to be able to consistently in every matchup move the ball. I think the Saints become a better team, Jameis a better quarterback, and Kamara more scoring opportunities. So he would be my pick at number six. Mike? All right. At, so at this point, I I am considering would I take a wide receiver here. Uh, the Maybe it's just, you know, recency bias, but the 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 running back injuries have been fast and furious this year. Uh, not not that wide receivers are immune, of course, but I'm not going to go at the wide receiver. Uh, I'm going to take Najee Harris here. Uh, he's been great on the field. He's been consistent aside from week one, which was a matchup against the Buffalo Bills. And now with Juju Smith-Schuster's injury, you could see far more targets or even more targets going to Najee Harris. So he feels like a, an extremely safe running back pick aside from injury where he, you know, he had, he had the cramps, he had the little calf cramps. Right? Yeah. You freaked out about the crap. Oh, man. We, we were watching and it looked like he pulled uh, because it, yeah, if you watch the sequence of events, Najee, you saw, he tweaked something and he starts stretching on the field and you're like, what, what's going on here? And then Najee says, no, I'm not going off the field. I'll play through it. I'm going to play through, and then he runs uh, not a wheel. I'm not exactly sure what you call the route where the, the running back fakes like they're going to go out, and they hook back into the center. And he slips, he stumbles, and he goes down. And it was like, are, holy crap, man. You, you, just, it, you just tweaked your leg, and now you planted and you went down. So it, it was – that was a frightening few moments. He was smiling the whole time. You just I, got scared. He was not smiling the no, whole time. No, he was. He was so happy. <laughs> he, was, he knew. Ah, oh, that's one of those was, friendly, uh, friendly, I got the cramps. friendly, friendly cramps. Uh, so you're taking Najee. Thank you. I am. I'll take. Uh, I'll take Austin Eckler. Um, <laughs> right now, the top ten running backs in half PPR: Henry, Eckler, Elliott, Patterson, Hunt, Najee, Aaron Jones, Nick Chubb, Alvin Kamara, James Robinson. I want. The only reason that I would take him over Najee, which is a great pick. Is because I love the offense. I have confidence sure. in the quarterback. I have confidence in in the offensive. But you system. don't have the confidence in the Steelers. No, but I do think the Steelers are going to be better. I really do. It, the they, offense, they showed some signs last week. It could be one week, but the offensive line they got their stuff together last week. So Austin Eckler though is is if yes. he's active, he's immune to a bad game. He really is. He's five plus targets. He doesn't. I mean, he's the number two running back in fantasy football right now. He's had one game over like. 60 yards rushing like Love he's Eckler. he's just automatic and this team is going to score a ton um their defense doesn't seem formidable enough to where they're not going to be in a lot of these shootouts so Eckler is an easy pick yeah and, and I did not think it would take all the way till pick nine before we got a wide receiver um but I I understand when you're fighting for these running backs that being said I don't know if you guys realize what Devonte Adams has been doing, his depth of target mm -hmm. leads, uh, you know the the NFL. At the same time, he is the target leader. Like those two things, they're incredible. He's uh, on pace. He's on pace for only six point eight touchdowns, but he's on pace for two hundred and seven targets, a hundred and forty two receptions, and nineteen hundred and sixty eight yards. I thought about taking him. Oh, so God, Devonte geez. Adams is uh, welcomed on my roster. Yeah, he and the touchdowns will come. Yes, mm -hmm. of course. They always do for him. Mike, you are back up at pick 10 here. Mm. By the way, top 10 wide receivers so far as you're thinking. I'll, I'll, I'll read these off. Yes. In half PPR leagues, Mike Williams is number one. Cooper Cut, number two. Tyreek is three right now. Debo, number four. Uh, Devontae Adams is five. Hollywood Brown is six. Jamar Chase is seven. Justin Jefferson is eight. DJ Moore, nine. DK Metcalf, 10. Man. So, I can't wait to see where Mike Williams goes. That, honestly, that's that's the hard part right here. Is it's five weeks. It's not like it's just back to back. Oh, he had incredible weeks. No, this is five weeks. One of them was an absolute absolute turd, but 
the, the it's four weeks. The passing it's game. Four. Well, everyone has a down game. Tyreek Kill's already had two really down games, or you know, for Tyreek, man. But uh, if it's with the wide if receiver, this was your draft. If this were my draft, if this were my draft, I would take. Let me look at my list real quick. Make sure. I w- I would take Henderson. Really, I would take Daryl Henderson. Wow. I think he, I think Daryl Henderson is about to turn into a week win- or a league winning running back. So you're taking Daryl Henderson yeah. at ten. Yes, I think that the volume is there. The Rams' offense is sensational. People don't like Henderson hasn't fully exploded, but I think that he is about to take off. Wow, I have I personally have six more running backs ahead of him. So this is, I th- I would say, the first surprise. Obviously, if if he does get the workload and the offense and he keeps is. chugging, um, that's great. Well, if he can sustain that workload, it sure. seems like every time they give him the ball a lot, he just he he has to leave the field because he's hurt. He's a little hurt guy. I will go with. We've uh, already drafted two injured running backs, Jason. <laughs> well, that yeah, but the, I mean. The upside of Daryl Henderson is not near the upside of Christian McCaffrey. I'll go with Aaron Jones at 11. Aaron Jones Still. Running, running back for the Packers. Yeah, Okay. I, People are freaked out about Aaron Jones. Well, Aaron Jones is going to do what he always does, which is disappear for a week here or a week there, and then he's going to score four touchdowns in a game or five touchdowns in a game. Um, and so I'm still going to turn to the running back position here with Aaron Jones. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't I don't I don't blame you. I like Aaron Jones. I'm not afraid of him. I think that the Packers offense is gonna be good. I'm gonna go back to wide receiver and take Tyreek Hill. Okay. Um those two guys, Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, they're not one and two right now through five weeks, but they've done absolutely everything you wanted to see out of them. And of over the course of the season, by the end of the year, if every wide receiver is healthy, they'll be the number one and number two wide receivers. All right, Mike Mike, you are back up. Pick thirteen here. Where are you thinking? Uh at the wide receiver it's between a few guys. They are so close. Still have Stephon Diggs, Mike Evans, DeAndre Hopkins. These are players not in the top ten right now. Yeah, that is true. But I'm going to take. Oh man, would I actually take him there? And I, th- I think I would. I would go. I would take Justin Jefferson right here. He has been sensational the last month. Week, I like the pick. Week one was. Look, Week one was course, was a do. very down pick or a down week for Justin Jefferson, but he has been while the Vikings are struggling the last two weeks, it hasn't stopped Justin Jefferson. And so if the Vikings offense kicks back into gear, I think that Justin Jefferson can easily finish as a top five guy. I completely agree with you. He is This is multi year dominating. Yeah. Multi year consistency as well. Seventy point six percent of his games he exceeds ten and a half points and half PPR last four weeks. I mean, he had a number eighteen finish with no touchdowns last week just because the yardage is there. He's gonna compete for that yardage total leader at the end of the season. And I and I didn't you know, I don't want to like just dump on Adam Thielen here, but th- the last couple of weeks, this is what this is more of what I expected from Adam Thielen that he'll have his his flash games here or there because he's not bad, but he is getting older and Justin Jefferson is fresh and ready to go and be the number one guy. I will take. Uh, I'm up, right? That, that is, is correct. correct. I'll take DeAndre Swift. Okay, I like it. Running back for like the it. Detroit Lions, bounce back week again last week. Um, finished at 13, which means you now have like. You know, two top six weeks. You have a top 24 week that he got hurt in, and then he bounces back. You know, he had a bad game against Chicago, but, you know, he's he's going to get, what, six-plus targets almost every single game. So I will go with Swift. And in the, in the running back league-winning upside, I see him very similar to Daryl Henderson in terms of upside. Yeah, this is this is where it gets really, really interesting to me. There's a couple of running backs out here. Obviously, you've got Nick Chubb, Saquon Barkley, um, I, I would throw Jonathan Joe, Taylor, Joe Mixon, Jonathan Taylor, a lot of great um, running backs available. And at wide receiver, you have these unfathomably great question marks. Your sure. Cooper Cup, your Mike Williams, your Debo Samuels, your guys that are like Jamar Chase. Would I? Yes. Right. Jamar Chase. Would I take these guys this high? Um, I would even throw DJ Moore in there. Um, a lot of great options. All that being said, I think that 
I don't like <laughs> having this player on my roster. So far, he's had three great weeks. Wait, off. you're going to draft someone who you don't like on your roster? I don't enjoy him on my roster, but I think this is where he slots in. And this is this, – so you'll see. Okay. I'm going to take okay. Nick Chubb because I think Nick Chubb deserves to be there. I think at the end of the year, Nick Chubb will be a top 10 running back. Okay. Um, I don't like having him on my personal roster because you, you've seen it so far, the, the weeks where he hasn't got a touchdown. He's been great all of the weeks, like on the field. Mm -hmm. But they're not in fantasy. In fantasy, you know, two down weeks. But um, Nick Chubb's just been – you know, he's obviously a dominant force at the running back. Um, looks great. So this is where he belongs to me. All right, Mike is on the clock. Right now the top ten quarterbacks, if you're curious, in four-point leagues, Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Justin Herbert, Kyler Murray, Jalen Hurts, Matthew Stafford, Sam Darnold, and Dak Prescott. So this would be between the, the two breakout wide receivers for me. And goodness – you're talking about Cooper Cup and Mike Williams. That is, those are the two guys I'm talking about. I mean, since we're deciding kind of as a group, and these aren't really sure. competitive, Cooper I, Cup will, will be the next pick for me if he's still on the board. Yeah, I, I would I would agree that when looking at these guys, Cooper Cup has done it before. He's part of what we know is a great offense. I, I believe the Chargers are as well, but we know the Rams can be. The connection I think has been Chargers there. Chargers are a better offense. Yeah, you that, think the Chargers are a better offense. I do, than the I do Rams. think that they're a better offense than the Rams. Yeah, we, yeah, it, that's that's where the, the the conflict is. Is Herbert is great? I mean, it's it's proven. But is this is this really what we're going to see the rest of the season? Where Mike, Mike Williams was number one in week three. Yeah, number one oh six in week four. Number one in week five. Yeah, but the sixteen targets was so exciting. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll go. I'll take Cooper Cup. Here, uh, I'll take Cooper cup of coffee. That's I'm, the right I mean, pick. He, yeah, he's done. A, Mike Williams has done things before, of course, but you know, and bye weeks at the beginning of the season don't matter. But Cooper Cup's bye week is week eleven, where Mike Williams is is on the way right now. So maybe that's a little of a can have you lean one way or the other. Okay, this is tough at seventeen. I'm between yeah. a few players. Yeah, Giants, Detroit, Houston, Tennessee. That's a nice run here for Cooper Cup coming up. You might want to trade for him. Man, this is really tough. Um, DJ Moore in consideration. Yeah. Um, had his kind of down week finally, uh, which we hadn't seen, but he had top three straight top 12 weeks. Um, James Robinson should be thought about just for what the year-long – situation looks like you know Trevor Lawrence making some strides the offense making some strides Robinson is just going out there and dominating on a weekly basis at an important position for your team Stephon Diggs should still be remembered here what do you guys think DK Metcalf uh, the the two players that I well, would Metcalf be between, is kind of scary because of Geno Smith yeah the the two players that I would be between right here are Saquon and Jonathan Taylor you would take Saquon here Saquon yeah he I might mean, be out a month Oh, I, I, did you forget I, he was I hurt? I completely <laughs> forgot. What an idiot. No, of course I wouldn't take Saquon okay. here. Phew. Um well then that makes it easy on me. Know. It would be Jonathan Taylor, who who's just he he has looked great the last two weeks, two top ten running back performances. We we've always known the the talent if they utilize him the right way, which they have the last couple weeks, he would be my pick. Yeah, I'm gonna take James Robinson. Ooh. So I'll leave you, Jonathan In your face, Taylor. Jason. Yeah, that, I would say in no, your I, face, Jonathan Taylor, in your face, Antonio Gibson, and in your face, Joe Mixon. To I mean, that's a real support saying, you know, you would take – he's been great, and he was the running back seven last year, but um, talk talk about taking – believing in him more than those guys. Yeah. I mean, Jonathan Taylor, it's not a coincidence that the weeks that Naeem Hines has been banged up and hurt, that Jonathan Taylor has been more involved – it's not that I don't believe he's valuable to your team. I just slightly lean the Robinson direction um, for a kind of, you know, and Gibson's a good argument too, but injury risk there. I don't know. I'm going to go James Robinson. What I've seen sure. recently is he's the biggest leap in terms of where we were and where we are. You know, he's number three, number seven, number 10, the last three weeks scored every week. Should have scored more last week. Carlos Hyde was on the field late and, you know, dumb coach, um, a dumb coach is not going away. No, but James Robinson is forcing his hand. 
and he's doing it every single week. So I'm going to just – he's my Daryl Henderson leap here, the way that you took him at 10 based okay. on projection. I regret trading away James Robinson in our Dynasty I, League. I regret trading him away in the Listener League. So yeah. come up and paid with the pick. Um, yeah. It's really hard for me to not take Stephon Diggs here. I still believe in, I, obviously, his talent, the Bills, Josh Allen. Uh, but I, I will take Jonathan Taylor. Um, lock that in at, at running back. He has the chance to cement himself as one of those elite guys. Um, he has the talent to do so. So at this point in the draft, I would I would uh, grab him. And then at this point, then I would believe in Mike Williams. I'll take my this this one's easy for me. That he's the number one overall wide receiver currently. You know, I guess t tied in points per game with uh, or close enough with Cooper Cup. But the transformation that the Chargers have taken. It's I I would take the chance of buy in right here. There's a I mean barring injury, there's a I would say a probability that he leads the league in touchdowns at the wide receiver sure. position because his his size and what this offense has been able to do twenty five percent target share, um, just being six four two twenty and you know whatever they're doing, they're keeping him in they're keeping him safe. Well, and it's you want volume. You, I want a high volume of plays, and it might sound inconsequential, but the fact that Staley is willing to go for it so many times on fourth down, number one, there's an extra play. There's a potential extra target right there, but that's that's sustaining your drives. That's keeping your offense on the field even more than than most of the offenses out there. What's funny is, uh, you know, if you're like I was out of town this past weekend. So I didn't have the nine televisions up, and I'm in, I'm in the uh, the red zone right. channel, and then I'm like ch falling on my phone, and I'm like in the the scoring apps, and we get to it. I'm looking to see what happens with Justin Herbert. I'm like, oh, it's fourth and seven. So I go to another game. Right. I go to another game, going, okay, they they lost possession. Then I flip back to it. They still got the ball. Mm. That's right. And so, uh, yeah, our hero. Uh, <laughs> we love you, Staley. Um. It's funny, you know, there's a bunch of names now where it's like confidence check, right? Like how how confident are you that this beginning of the season will be replicated for the the duration and you're talking about players even like like Cordero Patterson, right? Half wide receiver, half running back. Sure. Super integral to the offense like 100% man. Yeah, and I look I the, the trade offers for Cordero um have been kind of crazy and I've turned down ones that I think are some people think are outlandish like Turn down Calvin Ridley for Cordero in our listener league. That's wild. Um, because oh, you did. I did. You asked for our opinion, and I was right on the fence, and I, I turned it down because running back was a position of greater need on my team. Calvin Ridley, thus far, like you can't, you need to take something away from Calvin Ridley. You do, like you, the way we talked about in the off season. Oh yes, this is a player yes. on his fifth year option, looking for a contract. And is actually it's not just it's not just Calvin Ridley doing the same old things, and then Matt Ryan's missing him or the offense. It's it's a little bit of Calvin Ridley too. Like he has not been as good this year. He is a part of the problem, and so I I didn't do it. I just didn't have confidence that he's going to be a dominator, and that's what I would have needed to get rid of Patterson. Um, so here I am. It's my pick. Mike Williams off the board. Jonathan Taylor before that. And um, I'll go Antonio Gibson, running back for the Washington football team. Yes, I, I don't blame you there. The uh, I would say the he, Gibson can make it through the season with his stress fracture in his shin and just manage the pain and then let it heal Keep during the scoring. off season. Well, yeah, that's what that's what Antonio Gibson does. He he did it last year too. the The lack of involvement in the passing game is so depressing after uh, you know, hyping us up in the offseason that this is what we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to get him more. And it's just two targets every well, it's, week. It's funny because the uh, last three weeks for him, 13, 17, 12. So he's been consistent, and he gets two targets. That's what you're going to get from yeah. Antonio Gibson. Give him more, please. Dos. All right, I am back up. There are, to me, five wide receivers. I am interested in one running back and one tight end on these next four picks. Uh, that we have left that I would be willing to take. Um, I am going to put my uh, pick as a vote of confidence in Stephon Diggs. 
Um, okay. He has obviously not been phenomenal so far this season. He's a guy I would be willing to trade for. Uh, you know, people are scared about Emmanuel Sanders. Yep. And Dawson Knox. And at the end of the day, Stephon Diggs is f phenomenal. He yes. is an unbelievable wide receiver on one of the best offenses with one of the best quarterbacks. It's going to work out. So I will uh, I will draft him. Here. Really, uh, one touchdown in five weeks has been the problem with Stephon Diggs. I, uh, it could have been two. I don't think he knew that safety was yeah, there. Yeah, we talked about that. Did that you? Yeah, it, it kind of looked it like he was. It wasn't pure show off to me when I saw the play, but I think he was just oblivious to the fact that guy was there. So, but why turn your head and not just run forward? Because you thought nobody was if, there. If, I mean, if you genuinely think no one's there, it's then not you dance, showboating. Baby. Yeah, you, you know, you don't you don't sprint if nobody's there. You just walk. Yeah, but I think that's a valuable um, a life lesson for Stephon Diggs. Yeah, I mean that that's you saying you take <laughs> Diggs over uh, Debo Samuel. That's you saying you take him over Jamar Chase, or, Hopkins, or DJ Hopkins Moore, or Metcalf, C.D. So. Lamb, and Jamar Chase. That's that was my list. All right, three picks left here. We got Thursday night preview to get to. Mike, where are you going with this one? The argument for Debo here is, I get it, uh, but th this is still season long, and what's going on with? Uh, What's going on with Garoppolo? Will that transit the full transition to Trey Lance happen this season? And I still believe that it will at some point. Uh, which now you have you have huge question marks of how the offense is going to work, especially Debo. So I'm just going to take what I believe is, is a nice safe pick with massive upside each and every week. I will take DJ Moore, uh, my guy from last year. Does, does that still count? Does oh still, yeah, or my guy? You from mean last? Yeah, you mean my guy Cooper Cup? Oh, you mean my guy Hollywood Brown? Yeah, I. Like, did they think it was about last year? No, oh, like, yeah, we're just one year. Yeah, I used 2022, baby. That was a 2022 <laughs> my guys show. I don't know why people the, don't understand. I, I I'm going DJ Moore here, but I honestly think that if you took Hollywood Brown right here, as crazy as that sounds, where he was at the beginning of the of the off season. I, f I am 100% bought into the breakout of the passing game for Lamar and Hollywood Brown. He looks sensational on that field. You know, uh, it's still hard for me to – I agree. He, he's an out he, – that game was incredible. That game was insane. His 85% um, uh, completion percentage was mind-blowing over 400 yards passing. Uh, but that's not how they want to win a football game is falling behind with a million mistakes – so I still think that there are going to be weeks where you are not as happy, especially with Bateman's return. Um, but to illustrate that, our our website we have a consistency score to all wide receivers. Marquise Hollywood Brown in his last seventeen games is an A in consistency. You're you're one drop away from our viewpoint of Hollywood Brown going. We should have taken him in the top fifteen. I'm going to take Cordero Patterson. Really? Whoa! Yeah, I want. I, I really. Yeah, I, I, okay. I'm gonna just. This is my last chance to pick a player here, and you. He's a he's a wide receiver who has received six or more targets for four straight weeks, 82 yards, 82 yards, 60 yards. That's all the receiver side of things. Then this past week, they give him the ball 14 times in the backfield. You end up with between six and 15 carries, and you're going to end up between six and 10 targets every week for Cordero Patterson. Um, there's really no reason that this offense is going to go away from him at all. So it, it's a matter of confidence here to take Patterson, and I think he is a bit of a cheat code where uh, I, I just think people need to accept it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it, obviously, you know, if it sticks uh, what's been happening, then uh, it's a great pick. Uh, what, what is he, the running back four? currently on the season he's had two weeks where he didn't score and he's been a top he was top 22 in both weeks so all right this is the last pick of the 24 we're going I'm going to take Darren Waller I've lived the life without tight ends it's not fun George Kittle is gone Hawkinson is n maybe not what we hoped uh so Waller is the last tight end standing of that tier Mandrews uh, knocking on the door sure all right let's hop into the preview Thursday Night Breakdown. 
Buccaneers at four and one take on the Philadelphia Eagles, sitting at two and three after the comeback win over the Panthers. DraftKings Sportsbook line: Buccaneers minus six and a half on the road. The over/under is a nice fifty-two and a half points in this one. Uh, Tom Brady gets to prime time it once again, and uh, I think he's going to be just fine prime timing. <laughs> I mean, Tom what about Brady, his thumb? He's the quarterback two on the year. Uh, Tom Thumb not worried about it. And there's too many weapons, and it's too efficient right now. You're seeing all of the things that we liked about Tom Brady coming into the year. This has been a continuation of the second half of the season that led into a Super Bowl. Tom Brady downloaded the software in half a year, the Bruce Arians software that normally takes a quarterback a year to install Mm -hmm. uh, because he's Tom Brady. Antonio Brown, you know, Mike, you were at the leader of the parade, but we, you know, he was in our UDK for a reason. He's been explosive. He's been another weapon on top of Evan. Like each guy brings something completely different to this team. Sure. It's been fun to watch. Like Evans is really a go to receiver, third downs, goal line, big plays. Brown is this, you know, deep threat. And, you know, he's been so valuable when, when Brady needs, needs a pass and then Godwin is just reliable on, on any given play. So you mix that up with uh Bruce Arians and you and you have the quarterback two on the season on fifty one touchdown pace. I don't think it changes here in in week five. I don't disagree. I really wish that Gronk was playing. Oh, this would be a great matchup for Gronk. But he's not. Yeah. So on the other side of the ball, Jalen Hurts has been an absolute fantasy stud. Uh Despite, you know, playing poorly, despite like, you know, a a quarter here, three quarters there of bad NFL football, it does 10 every week doesn't seem to matter for Jalen Hurts. The the rushing baseline saves him and the connection between him and Devontae Smith. It's it's growing. It's getting stronger. Smith is seeing is 23 percent of the targets, the fourth most routes run at the wide receiver position like Smith. Smith is really breaking out. He's. As far as rookies, he's overshadowed justifiably by what Jamar Chase is doing. But if if Chase, you know, if you compare if what Chase Devo- was, uh, go ahead. If you compare what Devontae Smith is doing to all rookie wide receivers yes. over the last decade, Devontae Smith is absolutely phenomenal. He, yes, he answered the question. All the questions in the draft season were, well, the BMI. Yeah. Well, he's too skinny. He can't work in the NFL because no one has ever he took worked. a BM on that argument. <laughs> oh, I like it. Um. Uh, you know, no one has ever worked with his body size, or or very, very, very few have ever worked with his body size Do in the NFL. Call, did you call him Paper Mario at one point? Yes, Paper Mario. <laughs> but the reality is, he has already proven, like it's a done deal, signed, sealed, delivered, that he can be great on the NFL field. He's still a rookie. He doesn't have the best quarterback. But yeah, you're. I, I'm in on Devontae Smith. Rest of season, I'm in on Devontae Smith in this matchup yeah, as me well. Too. Well, I actually, uh, we had waivers go through today, and I invested one fab dollar on a player that most people don't want to admit they invested any fab dollars on. I'm going to guess. I have not seen. I tried to claim him. I'm going to, well, no, no, because I put $2. I was going to guess Gio Bernard. In Zachary Ertz. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I, uh, I've got Kyle Pitts. He's on the bye week, and Zach Ertz is in a, look, we joke about Goddard's, right? Like mm-hmm. the two tight end positions. Do you think Tampa's going to score on Philly today uh, yeah. or tomorrow? Yeah, I do. So who's he throwing the ball to? I mean, it's Devontae Smith and it's it's Zach Ertz. Like, Ertz is going to be heavily involved. Yeah, Dallas Goddard is on the COVID reserve list. We, he, he, I don't think he's officially ruled as out, but he's going to be out. So Zach Ertz is a <laughs> – He has a way of turning seven targets into uh, no fantasy production, but he's going to get seven plus targets. I hate to say it, but yeah, he's, he's, good he's, he's not just like a – a good stream. I think he's an excellent stream this week. So the other decisions to be made is what do you do with the backfield in Philadelphia and what do you do with the backfield in Tampa in terms of confidence levels? Fournette looked like he was on the way to a high expectation and then a dud last week, and then he, he kind of just surfaced at the end of that game, got into the end zone, um, ended up having a nice game and still gets targeted out of the backfield. He had yeah, It, it was a solid game for Fournette, and it, it was one like – Gio Bernard had the receiving touchdown in the first half, and if I'm not mistaken, I think that was like his first touch of the game. So it was just kind of a 
well, that sucks that, that Bernard is the one who came in because Fournette was on his way to a monster game. Yeah, I, I think Fournette is a, a great play this week. Be happy to play him. Um, Geo in a PPR, you can maybe I, I pinch not. him in. But, yeah, I would I would, I would prefer not. to avoid it. I would rather play probably Geo over either of the of the really? Philly backs. I mean, Miles Sanders has not been getting the targets that he, he is he capable of. He jumped up of. to 75% of the snaps last week. Right. but 16 the, opportunities. On the ground is where you're not beating Tampa Bay. You could Like, Miles Gaskin actually had a decent game against Tampa Bay last week, but that was all through the air. 10 for 72, 74 and two touchdowns through the air. That's more Kenneth Gainwell than Miles Sanders as far as how they've been utilizing these backs. I want to avoid both of them. I feel like if I I feel like there's a 51 percent chance that Gainwell has the better game than Sanders. Yeah, I don't disagree. Other decisions to be made here. Anybody else you're looking at? I mean, you're starting all three wide receivers for Tampa. How um, do you view them rest of the season? I not that it matters that much, but are they just all the same? They that are you just play them pretty much all the same. I I would take Mike Evans as the one because I expect at the end of the year he's going to have the most touchdowns of the three. That's it. When I look at Godwin and Antonio Brown, very 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 similar. Antonio Brown's probably a little bit more boom and bust because he's being utilized down the field. Chris Godwin is actually my third and probably the safest of all three. He's on pace for I think 140 plus targets, 100 receptions. So yeah, you're just happy. <laughs> I like the running back situation in Tampa where it's fine. Right. You know, yes. it's like for the sake of my guy, Tom Brady and the wide receivers, like they can do enough, but like, you know, Leonard Fournette's going to do something head scratching that makes Bruce Arians go. These next two drives, I'm throwing the ball eight straight times. Uh, the last player to bring up uh, Jalen Rager. I just want to ask if you had a Jalen Rager, um, Jalen Hurts stack that you had to play. How would you feel emotionally going into this? Terrible. Game? Oh, terrible. Is like, there what's worse than terrible? Um, Jalen Rager <laughs> starting <sighs> in your lineup. Yeah. Um, four straight weeks outside the top forty-five. And in terms of snaps, at least for a week. But in terms of snaps, Quez Watkins has passed him. Yeah. So maybe sign Quez, Jason, and stack him. <sighs> okay. I'll uh, <laughs> I'll look into it. <laughs> Take your Thursday night players out of your flex. That goes. Uh, that's very important advice for this week, especially with so many fantasy relevant players in the mix. Matchups on tomorrow's show. As starts well, of the week. Yep, as well as a very important never not working, considering the week seven bipocalypse coming. Alrighty. Oh my gosh, I'm, I I don't have enough binge spots to prepare for that. Nobody does. All right, take care, everybody. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.